Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Focus Point Facebook Live. My name is Vivian and I'm an optometrist by profession. So as you can see today, it's me alone again. So I really, really need your support because I'm feeling a bit nervous, a bit kanchong because you know, talking for 45 minutes is not going to be easy. So I need your support. So what you can do is help me to like and also to share this Facebook uh, live post with your friends and family. So today, uh, we're actually going to discuss about something that is very frequently asked. So we receive a lot of questions about you know, eyes and vision care. And most of these questions are more targeted towards the COVID-19 pandemic. So there are a lot of people who are asking us what to do now, especially when there is a pandemic going on. So things may be a little bit different since we are actually in the new normal phase. So for some Malaysians, you may be also undergoing the CMCO condition right now. So maybe you are not uh, able to visit malls, you are not able to visit uh, optometries like before. So today we are going to try and answer some of the questions. And these questions right, have been pre-collected uh, from our previous Facebook Live session and as well as some other inquiries channels that we have. So if you have any questions, also feel free to leave in the comment box below. So from time to time, I will also check out the comment box and my friendly crew who is working behind the scene will also help me uh, with the questions. So I will try to answer the questions today as well. So thank you very much for joining me today and stay tuned because I'll be giving out some interesting and attractive gift in the giveaway session later. Okay? So let me see. Wow, okay, I have 26 people supporting me. Let's see whether I can hit 58 or not, yeah? <laughs> Lucky number for me. So please help me to like and share this Facebook Live post. So let me start by maybe, um, wow, we already have a question coming in. Okay, so let me answer this uh, question from our live audience first. Okay, this is from uh, Liao Yuklo. What food are good for eyes? Okay, so this is a very good question. So when we are talking about food or even nutrition for the eyes, right? Try to take a very healthy and balanced diet. Make sure that your diet is made out of colorful fruits and vegetables. And there are also some nutrients which is known for helping our, our eyesight. So for example, uh, vitamin A, and you also have you know, uh, better carotene, you have food that is high in uh, amino acids. So if you are interested, right, we are actually bringing a special session on healthy food for the eye sometime in November. So do stay tuned. Wow, thank you. I can see the numbers going, 33 now. So let me start with uh, this question. Um, this is a combination of a few questions that we received, so we make everything into one question. There has been an increase in screen time ever since MCO, RMCO, CMCO. Uh, how do we protect our eyes against uh, blue light and also against any eye strain? So that is also a very good question because in reality, in the new normal, that's what we have to face an increase or extended exposure to digital devices and even for near work like reading. For some of us, you may not be using digital devices, but if you are spending a lot of time reading or doing near work at home, you could also have some of this eye strain symptom. So maybe let me just try uh, explaining a little bit on what is digital eye strain or common eye strain. So some of the common symptoms are like, for example, if you experience headache, if you experience any tightness around the eyes or the forehead area or even the side of your head, what we call the temple, this could be a sign of eye strain. For some people, if you find that your vision is suddenly blurry or laggy, laggy vision is uh, sometimes experienced when you are doing near work for a long period of time, like two hours, working on the laptop or iPad. When you suddenly look up, right, you may realize that things look out of focus and it will take some time before it focuses back again. So this is what we call as a slight lag in your vision. Some people will experience dry eyes and for some people, you may not know, neck or shoulder pain right, is also a sign of a digital eye strain. So some of these symptoms are happening due to poor lighting. So for example, if you are doing near work, even if you are using your laptop or iPad in a poorly lighted room, if the room uh, is very dim, or let's say if the lighting is causing any unnecessary glare to you, this will actually make the symptom worse. Uh, screen glare, 
your back posture, example, if you are actually hunching over your gadgets or your papers, if you have any uncorrected prescription power in the eye that you are not correcting it, and a combination of factors. So, apart from all these, right, one of the commonly asked things is blue light. So, we understand that for blue light, if you are looking at any digital devices with LED screen or even LED lighting like those in the studio right now, so it will actually emit what we call an artificial blue light. This artificial blue light is slightly different from the natural blue light that is in our surrounding. So this is also known to cause some eye strain. So if you are looking for protection against digital eye strain and also blue light, what I would suggest is, number one, check on your lighting. If you are reading, if you are doing a work, whether it's on paper, whether it's on a digital device, always make sure that the room light is bright enough, but not too bright to cause any glare. Secondly, if you are using a digital device, right, uh, like what I'm using right now, I'm using my iPad, always check for the screen brightness and contrast. If the screen is too bright, it can actually cause a screen glare that can be very disturbing and very tiring for the eyes. Posture, like I mentioned, so try to sit in a better posture. So I'm guilty of doing that also. Every day when I sit at my office or even if I'm working from home, I will start with a very good posture and I will find that I will slowly slide into a not so good posture. Okay, so from time to time, do take frequent breaks from doing your work. So for every 20 minutes, take a 20 second break. Look out the window, you can walk around, give yourself a good stretch, check on your posture, and this will be very helpful. So if you're also concerned about this blue light that is emitted from all these digital devices, we do have an ophthalmic lens option in the market that can filter out some of this harmful blue light. So you can also check out any of Focus Point outlet to know more about these products. Wow, hi everyone. Or somebody said, okay, CK Simon said all the best and good luck. Thank you. I really need the good luck and I also need you to help me and like and share this post, yeah? So there's another question from the live audience. If we have astigmatism, how often should we check our eye? Okay, so that is also a very good question. Thank you for that. Generally, we would advise an annual eye examination, which means uh, regardless whether you have power or no power, right? It is advised that every year, you should have a comprehensive eye examination where we not just only check for the eye power, we will also be checking for the eye health and also the eye structure. If you are undergoing any medical treatment or if you are seeing any doctor for monitoring, for example, if you have a glaucoma or if you have any eye disease that is under the monitoring of medical care of a doctor, please follow the schedule that the doctor or clinic has set for you. So some diseases, you may need frequent monitoring. So you may be asked to do an eye check more than once a year. It could be every three months, it could be every six months. So do check with your medical practitioner on that. So I hope that answers your question. And moving on to the next question. Um, a lot of people also ask, why is it that everybody is asked to not touch the eyes or the nose? Why is nobody asking about touching the ear? So this is a genuine question. And at first when I saw this question, I actually hesitated because I didn't know how to answer. Like, oh yeah, why nobody ever mentioned about not touching the ear? But everybody is saying that, no, don't touch your face, don't touch your nose, don't touch your eyes. So I actually did some research online. And I actually found this article that is published by the uh, AOA, the American Optometry Association. So according to that article, right, um, the main transmission mode of COVID-19 is actually people to people. So how the virus is being transmitted mainly is through people and people contact if you are in very close proximity. So let's say if you are within an arm length or one meter distance, there is a higher risk of transmission. And the second way is actually through contaminated objects or surfaces. So for example, if this table is contaminated, if I touch this table and I actually touch my eyes or nose, there is a higher risk of uh, contracting the virus. So this is actually because in our eyes, right, there are a lot of blood vessels. So these blood vessels may be if you just look at the eyes like that, but they are there. 
and these blood vessels are actually very close to our sinus cavity, our sinus, and also to the brain. So according to that article, the eyes can be thought of as a very easy entry point for the virus and the virus can actually move through this blood vessel in the eyes to the other parts of the body. So that is uh, why we should avoid touching the eye. So for contact lens users or you know ladies, if you're wearing eye makeup, always make sure that you know you're washing your hands with soap and water uh, very uh, thoroughly before you actually handle contact lens or makeup. And then we also have uh, this question. I am uh, having some issues with my eyes, but I am not comfortable to go out at the moment. Do I need to see a doctor? Okay, so I understand, uh, especially when we are going through this uh, pandemic, uh, as a prevention measure, we are asked to stay at home. We are advised to, you know, jangan kesana kesini, remember? Uh, stay more at home. But let's say if you have any uh, discomfort or if you have any issues with your vision or your eyes, right, you can always book an appointment to get your eyes checked. So there are some examples of eye emergency that I would like to highlight here. So number one is if you have suffered any trauma to the eye. Trauma as in if you have suffered any impact to the eye. If you fall down and hit your eyes or if any certain object hit your eye directly. So that is what we call a trauma. If you have a persistent redness, your eyes are red for maybe uh, more than a week and it is not resolving, the redness is not going down. If you are having any pain in your eye. So I've heard before uh, patients telling me that Vivian, I feel pain in the deeper part of the eye. So it is true sometimes in cases of glaucoma, right? People can feel pain in the eye. So if you have any sudden loss or change in vision, if you see any dark spots, dark patches or even like dark curtains on the upper or lower part of your vision. If you see any flashes of lights, it could be flickering lights, it could be just one flash of light. So if you experience any of this, right, it could be a sign of an eye emergency. So what I would advise you to do is, you can call up your doctor first, uh, find out uh, what time is best, book an appointment to see the doctor. So try to avoid any walk-in because uh, number one, uh, the doctor may not be available. Number two, we want to minimize uh, crowding. So if you book an appointment in advance, right, I'm sure the clinic will be able to manage uh, your inquiries better also. Okay, let me check the comment section quickly. Okay, I think we also have uh, another question coming in from the live audience. Thank you so much. I really love the questions. Please keep the questions coming in. Any tips for eye care besides wear glasses or lenses? Okay, so um, eyes and vision care, right? Um, I like to use the term eyes and vision care is because sometimes, right, when we are talking about glasses or contact lens, the main function is to correct any power that you have. But for some people, you may not have any power. So you are just thinking, if I don't have any power, if I don't need to wear glasses or contact lens to see better, how should I take care of my eyes? So generally, right, it's the same as your general healthcare. What you need to do is, you know, take a healthy and balanced diet, keep yourself active, you know, do some sports. So if your general health uh, is good, so the same will also apply for the eyes and also go for annual eye examination to catch any early symptom. So I hope that answer your question. And we have another one that is quite interesting. Uh, maybe I'll read out. This is from uh, Chahaya Nuris, saying that I have migraine. Clear vision sometimes make migraine, especially during daylight. So I don't wear glasses during daylight. Is there any solution for that? Special glasses maybe? Okay, so Chahaya, um, for your question, right, it really depends on what make the migraine worse. So sometimes, um, is it clear vision or is it the contrast? Clear vision, which means you can see uh, smaller words clearly. Contrast, which means like, you know, the color of maybe example, the words and the background. So that is what we call the contrast. For some people who are very sensitive to glare or contrast, what we can do is we can actually prescribe a tinted lenses. So with the tinted lenses, you still can see the small lenses. But what happens is with the color tint, right, 
things may appear not to be so sharp and so bright. So some migraine uh, customers or patients find that that is helpful for them. So if you have uh, similar issues, maybe you can also drop by, book an appointment with our optometrists or opticians and let them consult you on this. Okay, let me see, is there any more questions from... Okay, so uh, William LW also asked a very interesting question. I have short-sightedness and astigmatism. So uh, this is uh, Ramun Jawo and also Silau. So if I were to wear contact lenses, is it necessary to wear lenses that corrects both problems or just for short-sightedness will be enough? Okay, so uh, in the market, right, most of the contact lenses that come with astigmatism correction, the power will start with um, 0.75 diopters and above. So uh, it's also known as 75, okay, in more layman term. So let's say if your astigmatism is lower than that, Okay, what we will do is the optometrist will actually compensate some of this astigmatism so that you don't have to wear this special contact lens that we call toric contact lens. However, if your power for astigmatism is 75 or higher, right, we would definitely recommend that you go for uh, contact lenses which are called toric contact lens that can correct astigmatism. So you will find that this will really make a difference when you are in a dim condition or when you are driving at night. So I hope that um, answers your question. And another one from Natsi. Natsi Ray Yusuf is asking, can pink eye affect our health condition by like having fever or feeling unwell? Okay, so uh, pink eye is also known as red eye and sometimes it's also known as what we call a conjunctivitis. It can happen for many reasons. Uh, if it's just the eye alone, right, can happen due to allergy. So it can also happen uh, due to a bacteria or even a viral infection. So sometimes people with fever or people who's not feeling well, uh, let's say if you're the mom, sometimes the symptoms do show up as um, some redness in the eye as well. So pink eye by itself uh, is not enough to say that uh, there is uh, the mom or any sickness going on. It could be as simple as an allergic reaction or sometimes if you rub your eyes too hard, so it could also happen as well. So the best to do is a normal pink eye, right? If there is no pain, if you don't have any loss of vision, it can normally resolve in maybe one to two days time. So if it's going on for longer and you don't feel comfortable, if you have uh, any more symptoms like pain, uh, loss of vision, changes in vision, then it is best that you see a doctor immediately. Wow, 34 viewers. So those of you who are watching, thank you for your support. Please help me to make it higher, you know, like, share, tag your friends. I need more support. <laughs> it's not really easy, you know, really. I feel the stress sitting here, talking to the camera alone. So please support me. And the next question we have collected um, prior to this Facebook Live is, uh, during CMCO, can I still visit Focus Point? Okay, definitely we most welcome you okay so we also understand that uh, there are a lot of customers who are reaching out to us so some are ready to come to our outlets so later on um, I'm gonna ask my crew to actually include our focus point store listing this can also be found in our website so we will put the link in the comment section box later on okay, so what you can do is in that uh, website, you can find the list of all our outlets together with a phone number, our address and also a Google Map function. So for those of you who want to visit us, we will advise you what you can do is you can always call us in advance, book an appointment or for those who are not sure which is the nearest focus point to your house, you can always check the website. There's a Google Map function for you there and you can also navigate to our shop using that function. So a lot of uh, people are actually uh, coming to us, inquiring about uh, for those who are undergoing CMCO especially, they are asking uh, how do I actually get my contact lens replenishment? Can I, you know, is your shop still open? Uh, if I don't want to come to your shop, what can be done? So we do understand that during this period, some uh, customers or some members of the public, you may feel a bit cautious you may feel you do not want to come to uh, overcrowded places. 
That is why in Focus Point, right, uh, we also do provide tele-optometry and tele-marketing services. So what are these two services? Tele-optometry, like the name suggests, uh, if you have any issues with your eyes, uh, your vision, contact lens related issue, you would like to talk to someone but you don't feel comfortable coming to the shop just yet, you can always give us a call and our optometrist or optician will be very happy to give you a consultation either via phone call or we can also make an appointment to make a video call consultation with you. And telemarketing is where we actually offer some of the very exclusive services. For example, you can actually order your contact lens uh, replenishment uh, through our uh, on-call services and you will actually get this uh, stock delivered to your doorstep. So these are some of the services available and of course our e-commerce store Focus Point uh, is still open so if you already know your power, you know your product, you have no issues with your contact lenses, vision or your eyes, you can also place your orders for contact lens replenishment through our e-commerce website. And same thing applied, we will make sure that this is delivered to your doorstep. So you just have to make sure that address that you enter, uh, it's uh, valid during this period of time. So uh, we can send to you. Let me see, I think we have another question coming in. Okay, what is a necessary action when knowing eyes begin to myopia? Okay, so if you think that you are starting to have some power, so for example, if you feel like uh, my vision is not so clear when I look at anything that is far, uh, I'm having issues when I'm driving, so what you can do is first step, always make an appointment to come in where we can give you an eye check uh, to check on your power, also on the structures of your eyes to determine whether you need a vision correction or not. So vision correction, it can come in many forms. It can be uh, in the form of glasses, it also can be in the form of contact lenses. So we will actually recommend a solution that is suitable for your lifestyle and your power. And the next one that is coming from the live audience is which type of lenses to recommend for eyes that is easily overstressed from digital device? So that is a great question. So in the market right now, right, we have a variety of product that is designed to suit different needs. So we have a type of specially designed lenses, what we call antifatic lenses. Um, the lower portion of the lenses, right, it comes with a built-in support. So when you are looking at any digital devices or even if you are doing paperwork, like extended hours of doing uh, paperwork, near work, uh, this built-in support can actually make your vision at near more comfortable. So on top of that, you can also go for lenses that comes with a blue filter. So it will actually filter out this um, artificial harmful blue light from the digital devices. Okay, so I really love the questions. Keep them coming in. Wow, still 38. I need more support. Can you all help me? Okay, like maybe I set the number a bit lower. Like instead of 58, like maybe you give me 50. Like, okay. So please try and help me share, tag more friends, invite more friends and family to watch the live session. Make it at least 50, okay? And the next question that um, I'm going to share with you is um, why should we visit optometrists or optician? Okay, so especially during uh, this pandemic prevention, right? Some people will ask, just now that I already uh, discussed with you all, when to see a doctor. So maybe now also I can let you know when uh, do you see an optician or an optometrist. So number one, if you feel your vision is changing, like just now that was a very good question. What do I do if I'm having early symptoms of myopia? So what you do is you come and see an optician or optometrist for an eye check. So of course, we also do provide services in the event that unfortunately, if you have broken your frame, uh, lost your frame or glasses, and if you need a replacement, if you need to repair your glasses, if you need to adjust your glasses, so for example, maybe your uh, glasses is out of alignment, so you may need to get it adjusted. So we will advise you if uh, it is very much bent or very much out of alignment, always bring back to the shop where the professional can help you. So of course, if you have any problems with your contact lenses wear, uh, it could be about any issues that you have, any questions that you have, or even if you just want to replenish, we'll be very happy to assist you. So at Focus Point, 
you can be reachable via you can visit our shops okay so you can also give us a call uh, on our phone number and we can also arrange for some video consultation if it's needed so you can also email us uh, you can also chat with us on our focus point facebook page and also on our focus point website so there are many ways that you know we are still here to provide our services to you okay so let me just quickly check Okay, so there is another question that you know is asking should I stop wearing contact lenses uh, during the pandemic? So uh, this is a very common question. So I understand that there have been a few media reports. So uh, some articles also saying that try not to use contact lens. So contact lens by itself, right, like a piece of contact lens, this will not cause uh, COVID-19 virus. But what could happen is improper handling because just now uh, like uh, we have discussed not too long ago uh, the eyes are actually considered as an easy entry point for the virus so we try to make sure that if you need to touch uh, your eyes or your face always make sure that your hands are clean so contact lens is safe to wear during the pandemic period but you will need to make sure that you always wash your hands with soap and water dry them and before handling any contact lenses or even eye makeup. If you are a contact lens user, the right way to wear and care for your contact lens is very important. Make sure that you are cleaning them and storing them in the right way. So as a general advice, uh, some people may also prefer to wear glasses at home. So if you are a contact lens user, I will strongly advise you, you must have a pair of spare glasses. Number one is for time of emergency. So uh, let me give you an example. Sometime in March when the MCO was initially launched uh, nationwide, right? Uh, some of our contact lens consumers, they were not able to get replenishment in time. And it only occurred to them that the importance of having a spare pair of glasses. So for those who didn't have spare pair of glasses, um, they had issues initially. So imagine if you are high power and you don't have enough contact lenses, at the same time, you don't have spare glasses, so that is going to be very inconvenient. So please make sure that as a contact lens user, you should have a pair of spare glasses. So if you are at home, you can always wear your glasses to reduce the contact lens use. Because um, there is a new trend that is happening in the optometry market or optometry industry, which I'm going to tell you a bit uh, later. So, some of the contact lens users or even glasses wearers are reporting an increase of dryness with the mask usage. So if you are somebody who has dry eyes and you are using contact lenses, what you can do also is you know, try to wear glasses at home. Okay. So why do masks cause this dry eyes? It's because right, I also learned this thing uh, quite recently. There is this phenomenon called mask-associated dry eyes. And how I came across this is very interesting because the other day I received this inquiry. Hi, focus point. Um, how can I prevent uh, MADE? So I was actually lost because when my team passed me that question, right, I didn't know what was MADE. So the easiest thing I did was I went on Google. I tried to uh, I tried to look for this, and I realized that this actually indicates mask associated dry eyes. So for now, right, especially in Malaysia, ever since 1st of August 2020. So all of us, it's compulsory. You have to wear a face mask when you're out in a public place. So this will also cause an increase in this so-called MADE or mask-associated dry eyes. So what happened is when you're using a face mask, right, okay, just imagine, uh, okay, if you're using a face mask, the spread of air outwards through your nose and mouth is actually limited because of the face mask covering. But if you are wearing your face mask very loosely, if there is a gap here on the top part, what happens is this warm breath of air from your nose and mouth will go upwards. And this uh, warm flow of air across the surface of your eyes can actually accelerate the evaporation from tears, so causing some dry eye symptoms. So which is why if you are uh, you're always out in public places, maybe you have to do so because of work. You have to be up, you have to be wearing a mask. 
and you are feeling any dryness in the eyes, what you can do is very simple. Use a lubricating eye drop. So in the past uh, few Facebook live sessions, we also discussed about the different types of eye drops. There are some that are suitable for contact lens users and non-contact lens users. So if you're interested, you can also drop by our Focus Point Facebook page to check that video out. So use a lubricating eye drop and make sure that when you're wearing your mask, right, tighten this metal strip on the nose bridge. So when your mask is worn closer to the face and it fits tighter or fits better, right, you reduce this flow of air. So this will actually reduce this uh, MADE, the mask associated dry eyes, and also at the same time, reduce any fogging of the lenses if you're a glasses user. Okay, so I think um, I'm a little bit short of 50, so I think it's a good time for me to introduce my giveaway for today. So as a thank you gift, we are actually giving out five units of this Xiaomi power bank. Okay, this is not an advertisement for Xiaomi, eh? this is still Focus Point Facebook Live, but we are giving away this uh, power bank to you. Personally, I really like it because I can't live without power bank. Too many digital devices, I need to always make sure that I have a power bank in hand. So if you want to win one of these five units of Xiaomi power bank, all you need to do is help us to like, share our post, and also answer in the comment section below what are the topics that you would like us to do next. So suggest to us some of the topics that you want to see next and tag three friends. Okay, so I repeat one more time. If you want to win this Xiaomi power bank, all you need to do is first you must like and share our Facebook live post. In the comment box below, tell us what topic you want us to do for the next uh, sessions of Facebook live and tag three friends. Of course, if you want to tag 30 friends, I'll be more than happy. Okay, so while waiting for you to key in your answer in the comment box, maybe I can also take some more questions. Can contact lens cause floaters? Uh, okay, so for contact lens use, right, contact lens is actually worn uh, on the outer surface of the eye. Okay, so when floaters happen, more often than not, it's because in the eye itself, that is what we call a vitreous. So this vitreous is like a jelly. So it helps to hold up the shape of the eye and also the pressure. So over time as we age, or if there is, there's any trauma, any surgery done to the eye, this uh, jelly right, will tend to liquefy a little bit. And when it's liquefying, right, these small bits of vitreous will be seen scattering around. So when the light goes into your eye and hit all these scattering small pits of vitreous, it will cast a shadow on the retina. That's why, right, you can see something like, you know, jelly, a strand of hair. For some people, it could be dots that is like jelly-like and floating around. Those are called floaters. So contact lens is not known to cause a floaters directly. Okay, so it is still safe to use contact lens. So I hope that answers your question. And the next one is, is protective goggles recommended to use if a working background required to meet client? Um, okay, so I think this is also a very good question because we know that um, in many reports for research, uh, it has been shown that you know uh, the virus can also be transmitted via um, air droplets. So let's say if anybody sneezes, cough, or if you talk, right, there's any saliva, this could also uh, tend to cause a higher risk in transmission. So if you are talking about a meeting client, uh, I would suggest that first and foremost is um, keep a distance away. So even if you have to meet a client, right, try to sit um, across the table. Uh, if you are visiting any of the cafe outside for your meeting, you will notice that instead of face to face, um, they are arranging the seats like maybe like diagonally, so to decrease the risk. As for the protective goggles, it will also depend on what is the policy that your company is implementing. Because uh, if you're talking about meeting clients and all that, so uh, you may have to check with your company HR on whether it is okay to do so or not. Um, as of now, right, there has been no specific research uh, suggesting that you know um, wearing these protective eye goggles 100% uh, can decrease or reduce the risk of transmission.
But to me, right, for myself, I always think prevention is better than cure. So uh, personally, I do feel safer if I have something that is in front of my eyes that's blocking the eyes. So sometimes I wear glasses, even though before this, right, I don't really wear glasses. So I start to have this habit. And what is more important than uh, protective eye goggles could be the mask. So make sure that you are wearing your face mask in public and make sure you are wearing your face mask in the right way. Which means right, your face mask must be fitted properly uh, using the metal strip and it must be covering your nose, your mouth until the chin area. So uh, that is the right way to wear. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Um, another question is, it is very interesting, why do we have eye bleaching? Personally, this is something that I also want to know why because um, friends, colleagues, you all know I have one eye that is very twitchy So um, according to this Chinese superstition, right? If you have a twitchy left eye, it means something bad is going to happen So sometimes I like to go around joking with friends and also colleagues hey, I don't know why my left eye is twitching again, you know I think something bad is going to happen But in reality, um, scientifically, right? Um, this micro muscle spasm right, can happen for many reasons. So one of the many reasons is let's say if you uh, don't have enough sleep, if you're too tired, even if you're overexcited, somehow that can actually uh, activate the micro muscle spasm in your face. So of course there are also some other medical conditions that is associated with eye twitching. So uh, if you have any eye twitching, the best is to monitor it. If it's not affecting your lifestyle or your vision, it's probably fine. But if your vision is affected or if your lifestyle is affected, you can always visit an eye specialist who can provide uh, information on how to manage or even how to stop it. So let me see, do we have uh, any more questions coming in? Yes, we do have. How do we know the onset of cataract? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is also something that is quite interesting. How do we know uh, about the onset of cataract? It really depends from individual to individual. So for people who are more sensitive, sometimes right, they may report as, you know, early symptoms are seen as uh, a change in color contrast. Some will say things appear to be more yellowish. So for example, if I hold this up, right, this is actually a white background. So if for somebody who has cataract in the eyes, some of them may tell me that okay, somehow the white look more yellowish. My white wall in the house is also looking more yellowish. So that could be a sign. Another sign is a change in vision. Okay, so the vision may, may be different already. So what we can do at our shop level in Focus Point is we can actually use a slip lamp. So that is actually a specialized equipment that can actually let us check the inner eye. So with that, we can actually scan the inner eye, including the lens, to see whether there is any clouding or opacity in the lenses. Okay, so if you are having any uh, issues or difficulties with your vision, and let's say if you are in the age range of maybe like uh, 55 and above, uh, you have symptoms of uh, what I mentioned just now, you can also give us a call, we'll be very happy to assist you. Wow, thank you very much. I can see there's a, a lot of very good suggestions for our upcoming topic. Okay, really, really very happy to see all these comments coming in. So maybe I'll take one more question. Okay, how to care for children's eyes to reduce chances of myopia? So for this, right, maybe we have to discuss a little bit about what causes myopia. So myopia, um, the more Layman term to explain myopia is when your eyeball becomes a bit more uh, elongated okay. and that's why when the light ray don't really reach uh, the retina, that's when we have a short-sightedness. So there are many reasons that can actually cause this myopia, some could be genetic. So research has shown if both parents or in the family history, you have a um, family history of high myopia, uh, there is a higher chance that you know the young child may also uh, develop myopia. So another reason could be environmental. So nowadays, if um, kids they are doing a lot of meal work, they are doing a lot of digital devices, they are spending less time outdoors. This could also be one of the causes. So if you want to manage uh, myopia or to prevent myopia, right, uh, it's still back to lifestyle habits. 
So uh, make sure that when the child is studying, whether it's on any papers, books, or even on digital devices, make sure that the room lighting is uh, well lit enough, it's bright enough, but not too glary. Make sure that the screen contrast is comfortable. Make sure that the posture and the distance is correct. So let's say for example, a lot of kids, right, they may not know, right, what is the right distance to use the laptop or iPad. So you can see sometimes the kids go very up close or even hunch to look at the digital device. So try to ensure that that is a good distance away. So uh, you can use this as an example. So maybe about an arm length away. Make sure that they are seated in a good posture. So ask them to take frequent breaks. So for kids, they may not be um, as disciplined as adults. So they can't, they can't be disciplined enough to know that, okay, 20 minutes has passed. Now I must stand up, I must walk around. So maybe we will need um, some parent guidance or even um, some teacher's assistant in school to ensure that you know, they are doing this, taking frequent breaks. And there are also studies that show that um, wearing myopia control lenses or myopia control contact lenses uh, can be helpful in terms of slowing down this progression. So for these products in the market, right, it cannot take away the myopia. So it does not happen like your child has myopia. Once you put them on, it will become zero power. It doesn't work like that. But what it does is it helps to slow down the progression. Okay, so uh, if there is any increase in power, the increase is lower compared to normal. So that's what we want to have. Okay, and another question is, right, um, is it safe to visit uh, optical shops now when you have to do eye tests in such close distance? So I think this is a very valid uh, thought that many people will have. Uh, maybe some also hesitate like, uh, how sure am I that you know, it is safe to go to the optical shop to visit my optometrist or to visit my optician in their practices? So um, let me give an example of what we are doing in Focus Point. So in Focus Point, right, um, in the early days of the pandemic, when we got to know that you know uh, COVID-19 uh, unfortunately is spreading in Malaysia, we actually took very strict hygiene protocols. So this will include uh, when customers visit our shop, you may be asked to do a body temperature screening. We will ensure that you know uh, you have your face mask on. We will also need to ask you some questions about uh, like self-declaration that we may need to ask you about your travel history. We may need to ask you about you know, whether you're feeling any symptoms of COVID. So apart from this, right, we also uphold very high uh, hygiene standards. So for example, each and every piece of eyewear or equipment that has been used, right, will be cleaned before and after. So we want to make sure that we, want, we can provide a very healthy and safe environment for our shoppers. So uh, maybe I can show you a video on the hygiene guidelines and protocol that Focus Point is implementing in all our outlets to give you a better idea of how a safe and uh, optometry practice will look like. Okay, so I hope you enjoy the video. So in the meantime, I'll be continuing to check on the comment section also. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. So it also uh, show you some of the hygiene uh, guidelines that we are implementing. So I also hope for your understanding that you know if you visit our shops, very sorry if you have to maybe wait a little bit longer uh, because it's uh, 
too many people in the shop and we may need to limit the number of packs so you may be kept waiting for slightly longer we also apologize that you know if you have to wait longer because we need to take some time to disinfect right, the tables the chairs and also some of the equipment and eyewear that was used before so i really hope that you know um, you can get your understanding that we are trying our best to ensure that you know we are doing this to protect our employee and also the public safety because your health and your well-being is very important to focus point and that is something that we will never compromise on so that's why um, thank you for your support as well uh, during this uh, very difficult time so uh, we still receive a lot of very positive responses from our customers and we also receive encouragement from our customers as well telling us you know uh, thank you so much for uh, doing the disinfection we do receive messages or even compliments uh, complimentary emails from our customers thanking us for you know taking care of the community so i would also like to take this chance uh, to say thank you back to the community who has been so supportive of focus point so for focus point we will continue to try hard to provide you with the eye care and vision care services with the highest level of hygiene standards so you can rest assured when you come to our shop so i think we should have the winners for the giveaway really okay yes we do so uh, i am very happy to announce the winners the first one is mcc ching and we have a uh, sindhu subramaniam lee elizabeth anna tan and also zoe tan so congratulations you have actually won yourself uh, one unit of this xiaomi power bank so for the price redemption, all you need to do is drop us a message in our Facebook Messenger and actually our crew will get back to you about how to redeem these prices. Okay, let me just check. Do we have any more questions coming in? Yes, I think we have. Okay, uh, number one, how to maintain eye hygiene. Okay, so this is uh, something that is also very commonly asked. So uh, eye hygiene can be in many ways. So let's talk about the physical eye hygiene. Physical eye hygiene, let's say for example, how to keep the eyes and the surrounding areas clean. Uh, it's very simple. What you need to do is uh, every time before you have to touch your eyes, whether it's to apply contact lenses or makeup, make sure that you wash your hands with soap and water. Your hands must be clean. So a side note, if you are handling contact lens, don't put sanitizer after washing your hands. So there are some people, you know, after washing my hands with soap and water, I will apply sanitizer. If you're a contact lens user, we don't advise you to use a sanitizer and then touch the contact lens. This is because some of this chemical uh, on this, uh, your hands, the disinfectant, the residue may actually transfer onto the contact lens surface and you know, some of it may actually cause some allergy reaction. Okay, so please be careful if you are a contact lens user, washing your hands thoroughly with soap and water before handling is good enough. And always keep the area around your eyes clean. So let's say for example, if you have oily eyelids or oily lashes, sometimes because of the oil gland in our eyelid is uh, overactive. So you will see some of the oily deposits like eyelashes clumping together, or if you see something like dandruff on the eyelids or eyelashes, what you can do is, you know, take a clean towel, uh, make it uh, a little bit uh, wet in warm water, so soak in warm water. Okay. Do a warm compress by pressing the towel, clean one uh, over the eye, and then gently just wipe off any of this dandruff or oily secretion. So that will be able to keep uh, the eyes and the surrounding area clean. For ladies, if you are wearing makeup, always make sure that you remove makeup thoroughly and so because some of this makeup residue uh, can remain on your eye structure and cause some gland blockage or even transfer onto the contact lens. So if you're interested to know more about um, how to take care of the eyes hygiene, if you're a contact lens user or a makeup user, you can always check out Focus Point Facebook page. We have actually um, some of our past episodes of Focus Point Facebook Live on these few topics. So those videos can also be found uh, in our video section in our focus point facebook page so don't forget to also like and follow our facebook page so i think we are coming to the end of the session today thank you very much for your support so um, before we end today's session right um, this is just
just uh, something that I would like to say. So we know that we are going through a very uh, challenging times with the COVID-19 pandemic in Malaysia. And there is a lot that we can do as individuals to protect ourselves and also those who are around us. So do not forget, you must frequently wash your hands with soap and water and sanitize your hands. Avoid touching uh, any stuff unnecessarily. So especially if you're, if you're out in a public area, if you're in a mall or anywhere with uh, escalators, right, try not to touch the railings or not to touch any surface unnecessarily. So this can minimize the risk. If you're out in public places, uh, effective 1st of August, you need to be wearing a face mask. And remember, the face mask must cover your nose, uh, your mouth, and your chin. And please make sure that the metal strip is adjusted so the mask sits more fitted on your face. Practice social distancing. So this is also something that's very important because the number one way of COVID-19 transmission is people-to-people -people contact in close proximity. So wherever you go, make sure that you are doing your contact tracing check-ins using my Sajatra. And also, I think it's good that in this time, right, all of us, we should uh, give some more understanding and also some cooperation when we are asked to comply with SOP wherever we are. Because I'm sure as a community, all of us are working hard you know, to close uh, this uh, chain from spreading further. So sometimes maybe you may be asked a bit more questions. So sometimes you may feel, why do I have to keep on doing this uh, contact tracing? How many times should I fill up this form? So please try to understand that, you know, we are all working hand in hand to stop this invisible enemy and we all have a part to play. So kita jaga kita. So I really hope that, you know, everybody stay safe, stay healthy. And I hope to see you again in the next session of Focus Point Facebook Live. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.